Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of the jury, where were you on the 22nd of November, 1963? Sorry, that's the wrong... That's the wrong... <laughs> sorry, that's sorry, my mistake. That's, uh, that's, that's the Tony Abbott case. Um, <laughs> He was only six. Right, so, um, before I start, I must do some quick customer service research on behalf of planet Earth. Um, firstly, are you all enjoying the Syrian crisis? <laughs> no? <Nope>. OK. <laughs> Who here is loving the North Korea situation and the rumbling threat of nuclear Armageddon? <laughs> no? And who here is absolutely delighted about the bleaching of the Great Barrier Reef? Right, so... <laughs> There you go, people. Reality is rubbish. And we need to get rid of it before it kills us all. <laughs> and that just shows you what a serious issue this is. So, um, so we need to replace reality, ladies and gentlemen, not with the kind of fake news that has scarred the democratic universe by duplicitously pretending to be true, but with something better, something even faker than fake news and less newsiest. We need an entire fake universe, the fake universe of sport. So, let us look at where reality and fake news masquerading as reality has got this planet. For the first time in the history of the world, we have reached the point where, if the President of the United States of America was found dangling from a helicopter at Mount Rushmore, masturbating into the giant eye of Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> no one would be particularly surprised. <laughs> Oops. It would just kind of make sense. <laughs> the president's poll ratings would go simultaneously both down and up. <laughs> the fact is that fake news works, and it's here to stay. As the old saying goes, you cannot put the cork back in an erupting volcano. Um, Aristotle, I think it was. And, <laughs> and the fake news rhinoceros has not only well and truly hatched out of the bottle, it has moved into your master bedroom and started shagging your granddad. That sentence got out of control. <laughs> but the point stands, whatever it was. And fake news is better than real news. For example, here is a bit of admittedly fake news. To politics now, and in a bid to toughen up his public image, Labour leader Bill Shorten has announced that from now on, he wishes to be known as the claw hammer of unquenchable vengeance. <laughs> Mr Unquenchable Vengeance hopes that the rebranding will stop Liberal frontbenchers picking on him like a naughty schoolboy at question time. I'm Tracy Spicer, and what I say goes. Capiche? <laughs> now... Would you not agree, ladies and gentlemen, would you not agree that that is preferable to this genuine, breaking, actual, real news? Malcolm Turnbull has announced the government will begin implementing its long-term policy goal of culling the poor. The cull will begin next Monday in Brisbane, when Treasurer Scott Morrison will ceremonially slay 48-year-old <laughs> long-term unemployed bricklayer Kevin Platter with a bolt gun. I'm Tracy Spicer, and if I told you everything I know, the world would end. So, all hail the great Spicer. Fake news clearly better than real news. And in our democracies, we've basically just given up on facts. We just choose whose lies we are most prepared to be hoodwinked by and then complain that the other side were bullshitting if we lose. A dance as old as democracy itself. But that is not good enough, people. To build a better planet, we need to entirely eliminate the concept of reality. And there is no better way to do that than sport. Because sport is way, way better than reality. And if you don't believe me, ask yourself these two questions. One, which do you prefer, football or malaria? Reese, too slow, obvious malaria fan. <laughs> wants, wants you all to get malaria, typical mosquito rights activists. And, and two, which of the following two Americans do you believe poses a greater threat to the future peace, harmony and stability of this planet a, President Donald Trump, or B, the former world number 20 ranked female trampolinist, Shaylee Donovan. <laughs> Put it this way, people. Who do you want with their hands on the big red button? Who do you want playing keepy-uppy with the nuclear football? You would choose the trampolinist every time for the simple reason that no one can be angry enough to start a nuclear war if they spend a significant amount of time trampolining. That is <laughs> an inherently cheering activity. 
Think of a global utopia in which Donald Trump is completely cocooned from reality in the soothingly fake universe of sport. My universe. And we have the technology to achieve this, people. Using the miraculous power of the 3D printer, I have printed out a fully functioning cell-by-cell -cell reconstruction of Donald Trump's brain. Please bring the Trump brain on. Here we go. It is truly amazing what modern technology can do. Uh, as I said, this is a fully functioning cell-by-cell -cell working reconstruction of Donald Trump's brain. Um, <laughs> now, as you can see, this is not a healthy human brain. He has, as you can see, an enlarged cantankerous frond that is uh, <laughs> pressurising his uh, megalomaniacus uh, cortex, which is uh, obviously, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know, very swollen and uh, pressurising the confrontal lobe. Uh, results, loony. So, um... <laughs> So, firstly, we need to try and uh, get to know the man. Um, so, um, Donald? Yes, and... Uh, how, how are you today? I want to repeal and replace freedom women. Mexicans. And our constitution. Just a standard Trumpy kind of day. Um, <laughs> and, Donald, what is the ultimate aim of your presidency? We must fire all Muslims into space. <laughs> well... Uh, at least, at least he's being honest with us now. So we need to try something uh, quite radical using this uh, electrocranio neuro prong. Um, I'm going to uh, change his brain using uh, electricity to make him more like me because I am a blueprint for a happier planet. No big deal. I just learned to live with it. Now I don't, <laughs> I don't usually talk much about my own life in my stand-up comedy, uh, but I'm going to get a bit heavy with you guys if you don't mind me just taking it down a bit. When I was young, only about six or seven years of age, I fell headfirst into the porcupine enclosure at London Zoo. <laughs> and, sorry, it's, it's difficult to talk about even now, but um, w one of the porcupines penetrated the, the back of my skull and went directly into the sportuatory gland, <laughs> kisplurting the hormone sportosterone throughout my brain. And that's what made me so obsessed with sports for the rest of my life to the exclusion of anything of genuine importance. <laughs> so all we need to do is make Donald Trump as obsessed with sport as me, and then we can make him have as little impact on this planet as I and my comedy career have had. <laughs> so, so I will now aim for the exact spot that I was uh, injured in that fateful, uh, fateful fall. I'll just get it in there. Well, I think it's about there. I'm wearing only a jacket and a hat Oh, shit, I've made him horny. Mother, uh, mother, mother. It always comes back to that. OK, well, let's, let's just give him a quick blast to see if maybe we can find the, the feminist part of his brain and aggravate that. Right. So, Donald, how would you go about seducing a woman now? Grim, but a truly fabulous mind. Progress, people. Um, <laughs> big, big progress. So, um, so let's try to get him in properly, uh, properly into sport. Let's go... Right, OK. Hang on, so uh, what are you thinking about now? Sports, 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 sports. Okay, that's good. Now let's try and make it a little bit more specific. Tennis. Okay, we, let's, let's go for the big one. Cricket. Right, we're in, and <laughs> just need one final thing. Cricket, cricket, cricket. Right, okay, so, um, so we're ready to see whether we have compu completely cured Trump uh, of himself with the wonders wonderfully distracting power of sport. Okay, Donald? Okay. Okay, we are going to do a quick fire cricket quiz. Um, I um, keep one with me at all times just in case, uh, just in case I ever meet someone new and I need to find out if they're worth talking to. So, um, <laughs> um, Donald, are you ready? Ready. Okay, uh, firstly, uh, question one Who was the Australian captain? One Australia won back the Ashes in 1989 with a 4 0 series victory in England. Border. Correct, it was Alan Border. Very good, well done. A crushing defeat of the British. Don't rub it in, mate. Don't rub it in. <laughs> and who was, the, who was the losing England captain in that same series? Gower. Correct, it was David Gower. Very good. Very well, well, well. How bad it was. It was a terrible summer for England. Uh, really Arrogant elite. I think that's a misconception based on the loose, elegant way in which Gower batted. Anyway, so. <laughs> focus, Donald. Who was man of the match when Australia recorded a thrilling two wicket win over South Africa in Port Elizabeth in March 1997? War. Yeah, but which one? Mark. Correct, it was. <laughs> It was Mark Wall. Well done. Was beautiful Mark. cricket. It was a beautiful cricketer. But for a bonus point, what number test victory was it for Australia as a nation? 
237. That is good. I mean, even I had to look that one up on the internet. That is. <laughs> so, and which bowler coincidentally took his 237th test wicket for Australia in that game? It's a great question. Thank you. Shane what? Warren. Yes, it was. Well, I, think you, I think you could have guessed that. You could have guessed it. Totally unstoppable. <laughs> what, you or... Were... <laughs> You all warn, anyway. And in, in 1981, what did Australian captain Greg Chappell controversially instruct his brother Trevor to do to stop New Zealand hitting six off the final ball of a one-day international? Deliver the ball along the ground. Correct! <laughs> That's exactly what he did. He told him to bowl it under on. The wrong thing to do. It, it was morally unacceptable, you're right. In Australia, if Donald Trump is telling you that, that shows it is not how you should be playing sport. <laughs> Hang your heads. Right, let's set you out with some older stuff so you can get the good stuff. Uh, what was Donald Bradman's score in the 1930 Lord's One. Test? Uh, I meant the first innings, not the second. Sorry, 254. Very good, correct. And uh, but which of Bradman's teammates, considered by some to have been an even better player than the Don himself? Archie Jackson. How the fuck did you know where that was going? Right. And in the Bodyline series of 1932-33, what might Australian wicketkeeper Bert Oldfield have said during the notorious Adelaide Test match? Ow. Correct, he was hit <laughs> on the head after top edging a ball from Harold Larwood. Uh, in 1880, the Demon uh, Fred Spofforth. Uh, oh, yes, well, I'm afraid we are out of time, uh, Donald, but I can tell you, you have scored nine! Yes, yes, yes! Yes, that is the highest score by a sitting American president in the cricket quiz. I'm very proud of it, actually. You should be very proud of it, Donald. That's an outstanding performance. Basically, people said you, had, you in fact, were mortal enemies. Well done. Very well done. And I want to thank you, Andy. It's a pleasure, Donald. Always nice to introduce someone to the glories of the greatest game ever invented. R Right, OK, right. Well, I do, I, I do have to wrap up now, Donald, so I'm just going to have to uh, let it go now. I want to talk about Victor Trump. I'd love to talk about Victor Trump, but he's my favourite pre-First World War cricketer, but I really have to wrap up the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate Mexicans. <clears throat> um, <laughs> um, in, right. in, uh, in summary... In summary, Sammy J and his team... Stupid bunch of fucking jerks. Correct, Donald. <laughs> let, let me finish. These negative people would have you believe that we need truth. But the truth is, anything is better than truth itself. Particularly if that anything is the alternative reality grand fiction of sport. And look at it this way. If Bashir al-Assad was president not of Syria, but of the World Crown Green Bowls Association, <laughs> would this planet... <laughs> not be a better, calmer, happier place? Let me answer that for you. Yes, it would. And Crown Green Bowls would be a fuck of a lot more violent. That <laughs> is a win-win situation. Don't just fake news, people. Fake life. In nomine sportis, I rest my case. Thank you. Yeah!